All right, so check this out. Rest in peace to Kobe Bryant, man. Still can't believe he passed away. The story is still crazy and gives me chills. But on the Breakfast Club, they had Steven Jackson, and they talked about having Kobe Bryant's last interview. Wow, imagine having Kobe Bryant's last interview. That's so sad. Well, check it out. Y'all got the last interview with Kobe Bryant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. like like that's that goes down in the history books. Like, well, how does that feel when you think back on that moment? Was there any energy that you felt like you know? If you, if you see the video of us driving toward to, to we were like two kids. <laughs> so for me, this is somebody I I, start, I idolized at thirteen. We we in the same class, same McDonald's game, everything. So I seen this in him as a as a teenager. He was different then, and um, I'm just I'm just honest to say we had that last interview and. Um, he said some things to me and Matt that he been wanting to say to us because he ain't seen us in a while. And uh, I'm glad I was able to get that before he passed. Wow. Yeah, and, you know, my situation was different. You know, Kobe came to L.A. in 96. I came to L.A. in 98 at UCLA. So, you know, Kobe when Kobe first started, he wasn't playing. So he was always up on the UCLA campus, walking around, working out. So I got a chance to kind of sneak back into our gym and watch him work out and be like, God damn, motherfuckers cold. So I just kind of always – he was the bar for me. You know, I knew it. Like, if I'm going to be able to play in this league, I'm going to have to be able to guard someone like him. So my, what kind of became first was a fan and then, you know, became competitive, you know, going at each other and then came to a head in 2010 in, in Orlando with the ball fake. And what people think after that, I mean, that was about to be a real fight. You know, I was tired of the bullshit. I was ready to fight him. It was getting close to the playoffs. And, and, and that t particular situation, you know, turned into him calling me. Uh, that summer, um, I was actually on my way to Miami. I was a free agent. I was going to the big, the LeBron and Chris Bosh were going right up the road to Miami. So I was on the phone with Pat Riley and D Wade talking about coming to Miami. And then out the blue, I get a call from a number I don't even know. And for some reason I answered and it was Kobe. And he, you know, he just like anyone crazy enough to fuck with me is crazy enough to play me. You want to be a Laker. And like three days later, I was a Laker, you know, so through that we became teammates, then brothers, and we got the chance to know each other off the court. So he and I were very close. You know, he, my, my, my kids called him Uncle Kobe. They started getting shoes from him at like three years old. Uh, you know, he coached Gigi. I coached my twins in AAU. So I would see Kobe every other weekend. And the craziest part about it was, was he sent his newest shoe to my kids that Tuesday because we had a tournament that Grammy weekend. And, uh, he died on that Sunday. So he, we got his latest shoe on Tuesday. We went up to the Bay for this tournament and championship Sunday morning. We found out that he had died. So that shit was devastating to me and my kids. He, he don't, he didn't <clears throat> let a lot of people in. So <clears throat> what yeah, do you think it was? What, what do you think about your relationship that he, that he let you in? I, I mean, I just think, you know, when you get a chance to sit down and be with someone, you know, we were teammates. So we saw each other every single day. And then we were both going through some personal life stuff at the time, too. So we were, you know, not only playing, but we were out in the L.A. streets. You know, Kobe was the one that put me on, you know, put me in these these, these big Hollywood rooms and, and these doors with, with people that I would have never had an opportunity to be around. So we really got a chance to know each other off the court. And, and Cope was cool. You know, I heard that he was a certain way, but you got to think, you know, he went straight to the league. So he never really had that college experience to grow up and kind of fuck up before you're on the biggest stage, you know? So he fucked up and grew up in front of our eyes. And that's what I respected because he just kept trying to evolve and kept trying to... So by the time he and I became teammates in 2011, you know, he was a completely different person from what I heard he was. And, you know, I, I judged him off of what I knew. And we became real cool and real close. And, you know, like I said, that'll always be my brother.